I heard about you long before we met You're winsome and you're young, at least that's what they said Underneath your glitter and your gold You can't deny the fact that you are growing old You have a thousand eyes that never fall asleep Someday I will leave you when I've had enough of your beauty I just have this feeling that this video is going to be one of those that's just highly, highly baited. As it seems there are varying opinions on the Blackmagic versus the G2. But from my own experience with this camera over the past six months, I have to say I can't imagine having a better camera to take with me on all of my trips around the world, even to some cr incredibly remote locations with incredibly harsh conditions. There are plenty of other people who would disagree with me on YouTube that I know, but through this video, talking through the specs of the camera, how I built it out, how I store it for travel, and the way I use it, I'm gonna try and at least demonstrate and give some context, at least in how in my case, to me, this is an underrated run and gun travel camera that's great for documentary work. So let's talk about it. Before we get into today's video, I want to invite you to be part of the Frame Voyager community. We love getting to talk with storytellers, creators, videographers from around the world that we get to talk to on a daily basis, whether it's in our comments um, on Instagram or in our Discord, which I've linked below if you'd like to join our Discord. We love getting to talk with all of you and uh, talk about camera gear and help answer any questions that you might have. So be sure to click on the notification bell and the subscribe button to keep up to date with all of our content. Now enough of that, let's go back to the video. Before we get into my own experiences with this camera, I thought I'd quickly go over some of the finer details of this camera so we can at least have a baseline of understanding while we're talking about its software and hardware for those of you who have might not have researched this camera or are coming in this wanting to find more information about it. The Ursa G2 is the successor to the Ursa Mini Pro. The G2 added more to the controls and functionality while bringing an updated Super 35 4.6K sensor that came equipped with 15 stops of dynamic range with 120 frames per second capability at 4.6K. On the outside of the camera, they added a monochrome LCS panel, which displays information much like the flagship Canon DSLR or mirrorless cameras do. Also equipped is a built-in ND filter with a four position wheel to switch between various stops of neutral density. For storage, the Eartha G2 comes with, an, with two SD card slots, two CFast 2.0 slots, and a USB-C port to record directly to solid state drives, if you'd like just like out of the pocket line of the Blackmagic cameras. It also comes stock with an EF mount that can be swapped for other lens mounts. Obviously, it comes with a lot of the same features as the Pocket 4K and the Pocket 6K Pro cameras do, like the user interface and some of the settings with inside it. It doesn't have the dual native ISO that these other cameras do, but in the end makes up for it a lot with image quality, a better sensor. They've also added features like the 6K Pro has like an EVF, uh, shoulder rig, battery plates, SDI connectors, two XLR, two normal size XLR inputs, and more. This really doesn't even cover half of the features offered by this camera, but I'm just at least trying to give you some idea of what it offers versus the other cameras. And I'll be doing a masterclass or video manual on this camera, just like I did with the Pocket 4K and 6K Pro, which I'm working on currently in the near future, as well as a versus series that we're doing um, for the for all the Blackmagic cameras that I can get my hands on that will be, oddly enough, anime style. If you like to watch cameras talk to each other, which I don't think anyone ever asked for this, but we're doing it, we're making an anime style and that's something to keep an eye out for because it's gonna be absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, let's get into why I wanted this camera initially and that it really wasn't a last second decision for me. I had been looking at this camera for quite a while before I decided to purchase it earlier this year and had gone through different footage. I've tested out the Pocket 4K, the Pocket 6K Pro, the original Blackmagic cameras. I love the footage quality, love all of the stuff, but having the production options that the Ursa G2 has really, to me, kind of 
pushed it up. I, I will say before even getting into some of the other actual reasons I wanted this that are actually reasons, part of this is an optics thing. Uh, you, you know, you show up to some shoots with camera gear like this, people are gonna ask you less questions. They're gonna question you less. They're gonna trust you more with it. It makes everyone's life a little bit easier on a shoot, right? Especially when you show up with like some of the pocket 4K cameras or pocket 6K Pro cameras, which are totally fine cameras. They honestly have comparable footage to what the Ursa G2 can get sort of, but you show up with something like this, people don't, won't ask questions and they'll they already assume you're an expert, even though having a big camera has no, literally nothing to do with filming. It's just how the world works. So some of it, there is a little bit of a fact that you kind of want to have that because it does make you seem a little bit more professional and it does get you into some other jobs that, you know, having, not having one would. Some of that to have in consideration. The other thing would be the 15 stops of dynamic range and a couple of the things like having those full size XLR cables. I've tested the audio on this. I think the audio sounds better than both the Pocket 6K Pro and the Pocket 4K. Does that have anything to do with the mini XLR inputs? I'm not sure. I think the, the audio quality is definitely better on it, whether it's the preamps inside of it or the fact that again, it's full XLR, like the full size XLR input probably has something to do with it. But also having those makes it so easy too, not to have to like convert things all the time when you're out in jobs. Also going forward, I knew I was gonna be wanting to do more documentary work. I love getting out to go travel and film these travel adventure documentaries like the Alaska one I got to film or the scuba diving one or the road trip across the country. I have a lot of other documentaries for this channel I'm working on and storytelling in general that this camera just works really well for. The quality of the footage that comes from it, it really fits into what I want for a, a documentary kind of look. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about its form factor when I get into how I build the camera out and how I typically use it on a shoot and why to me it doesn't really hurt my back or make me feel any more tired than using a Pocket 4K or Pocket 6K Pro would. Honestly, to me, it's better. Actually, we're gonna, that's the segment we're going into now, which I'm actually filming with the Ursa right now, so I'm gonna have to take that on and put on a different camera. So let me get that. All right, and we're back here is the Ursa G2. This is typically how I like to build it out. Very minimal. You're just extension arm here that has a little bit of controls right here. And I'll show some, I'll show some B-roll of this while I'm talking about it. Got the extension arm and I like to kind of keep it kind of like here when I'm filming. It's really good to kind of like keep down here if you're just filming run and gun and need to get some quick shots. Otherwise, um, you can actually have a, a shoulder mount up here and then just flip this open and kind of view it from here kind of get your shot. This does come with an EVF that you can hook up and put like right on here and you can put your eye onto it like that. I don't like the setup with those types of things. And it's honestly, this is quick and easy to build. So I don't typically use that on this. And also with the price tag of like what, over $1,500. But also the nice thing with this is this V, this um, V mount battery, you put them right in, it's already charging it. Um, you don't have to have any cables or anything. So it makes it even easier. This, the only thing I have to pop off is top handle. Um, and honestly, that's really the only thing I have to put on besides if I have like a little a little arm over here that I'll put a, uh, a shotgun mount into sometimes that works incredibly well. That is literally my simple build out for this. That is really easy for run and gun. I really honestly don't even feel like I need much for this. I'll also use a, um, a fly cam with this and hook it right onto here and hold it so I can get those um, easy shots. And those fly cams, I gotta tell you, I'm gonna do a review on them here soon. They are so, so easy to set up, so easy for run and gun work because they, you, it takes less time to set up one of those than it does a camera. Like you literally put them together, they're ready in like under like two minutes, honestly, if you're like really focusing on it and they're easy to, they're easy to travel with so far. I can pack it with this arm on it. That's kind of how I, how I run with it. Yeah, it's incredibly simple build. I'm gonna do, as soon as I fully get this all set up, I'm gonna do a complete, like just showing how I build it out, how I do it all that um, later on. But I just wanted to give a quick overview of just like what it looks like. It's like super simple how I kind of have it set up and I'm sure I'm gonna get some flack for that as always. But uh, yeah, that's how I do it. And back to the Ursa G2. Now we've got the Ursa G2 back up there. Let's talk about how I've used this in the past four months and some of the locations I've taken it with. And I just wanna show this to you to show that I've actually tested this camera out. I haven't just bought it and then I'm just like, turning around and making it a video about it, um, reviewing it. Cause there's a lot of people on YouTube that barely use these cameras, really don't learn, get to learn them. And we've talked about it on this channel before. 
And uh, I'm still learning some of this on this camera, but I feel like at this point, I've learned enough amount about it to at least give a fair estimate and review on it. In the future, we're also gonna be doing much deeper dives on the Ursa G2. So how have I used it? Previously mentioned, I used it in um, Ala my Alaska travel documentary video where we went from Fairbanks all the way to the Arctic Ocean on the Dalton Highway, a incredibly remote road on the edge of a map. It, it was honestly a, a bucket list trip for me to be on. And it was an incredible trip filled with so many setbacks and such crazy things like an emergency landing in uh, Barrow, Alaska, which is the northernmost point in the United States. So crazy conditions, we're out there with it in the middle of nowhere and around a lot of snow in the rain um, in, in a car that was bouncing all over the place. In fact, it did take a nice little tumble when we hit some potholes we were not expecting and I could see it in the back rear view mirror pop up and down and it, it survived. I'm sure I'm gonna get some hate comments for that story, but that's it's just the case. It seems like it's a pretty hardy camera from how I've used it so far. Now we'll see in the coming years, how well it holds up to some of my work. And we've also had it in like below zero degree Fahrenheit weather out on the Arctic Ocean where we were standing and uh, how it handled some of that. It, uh, the footage honestly looked amazing. It handled Alaska and the travel so well. Traveling with it's great. Putting it in those hard cases, it fits great with the build I have for it. It's also incredibly easy to set up like on this trip. A very, very, very easy in my opinion, to set up. Honestly, much easier than the Pocket 4K or Pocket 6K Pro in some ways. And uh, even for um, interview shots that we used on a tripod, having the option to at least have those full-size XLR cables makes it much easier than having to bring along a bunch of adapters, which, you know, bringing along a bunch of adapters isn't that hard, but I just like the audio quality that we got from it, especially we didn't even have boom mics on the trip and we were just kind of like hand holding um, our, this mic actually for the trip. Alaska, I brought along two cameras that I really wanted to try on it. I brought along the 6K Pro and I brought along this camera and I found myself wanting to use the Ursa G2 more than I did the 6K Pro. And some of you would say, well, that's not super surprising because of the nature of the camera. Yeah, I, I think I definitely like this camera better than the 6K Pro. So moving on, handheld wise, to me, it's easy to kind of hold right here. Now, if you need to get up, you can put a, you can have the shoulder mount to put it up. But a lot of times I'll keep it here depending on what I'm shooting. Now, if I'm shooting a person, I'll put it up farther above, you know, above the nose line. I know there's some people that I've talked with that disagree with me about this being a great run and gun camera. In fact, they actually sold their camera, their, their Ursa camera and bought the 6K Pro because for them it was easier. And that always comes down to, again, when it comes to gear, and I say this all the time on the channel, know what you're looking for and know what you need to fit your needs when it comes to camera do do your research on your cameras and understand again what it is you're looking for what it is you need don't just buy a camera because it's an expensive camera that everyone's telling you to buy and it has this feature it has that feature if the features and how the ergonomics and the way it's built doesn't fit with the style of your filmmaking don't get it stay with what you're comfortable with and then do more research and find a camera that's going to work with what you want to do for me, this Ursa G2, perfect for documentary work, perfect for client work that I'm doing, perfect for run and gun stuff, that I just need good quality footage, again, with more room for error. The quality that's come out from it is honestly why I got it, especially with the roll off and the highlights and just the pleasant looking footage quality that I can get from it. And that super 35 millimeter sensor and the EF mount and the fact that it's an interchangeable lens mount, which means that if EF mounts just all of a sudden die, which there is a big problem with that, that's probably gonna be here in the next couple of years. I can change it and go to a different system where if you get the Pocket 6K Pro, you might have some problems here in the future. And But I'm gonna save that for our uh, Pocket 6K Pro versus Pocket 4K video and our Versus series that's coming out soon. So um, for those of you who are looking for a run and gun camera for this type of work, consider the Ursa G2, uh, rent it for a couple of days, rent it for a project and see how you like it. But I would definitely say this is a camera that you could turn into one that you can keep around for a while and do very high production work with. That's my final thoughts. If you have any comments or questions or you wanna tell me how absolutely shockingly wrong I am about this camera, feel free to comment below. I would honestly love to hear any side of this from you guys. It's been great hanging out, talking about cameras and uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next episode.